Hi, everyone. Welcome to week three in our Writing Wikipedia Articles class. Glad to see you all here. Um, and I would like to apologize to anyone who, for whom the class time changed. Uh, I would have liked to anticipate that better. Uh, I had thought that that was not going to be an issue in this round and was mistaken. So uh, if, if anyone is coming to us an hour earlier than you're used to, thank you for making that adjustment. And I know there are a few people who were not able to make that adjustment, so they'll be listening to the archive instead of joining us live today. So that's perfectly fine. Um, I hope it's not disruptive on your end, but uh, I think you will be uh, able to keep up just as well that way and ask any questions on the talk page instead of in class session. Uh, I do want to start uh, today's session with about 15 minutes of review. Uh, we have covered a whole lot of topics so far in the class, and I know that, uh, that it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, there are, uh, I, I have a few things in mind that I'd like to cover again, just uh, to make sure that people uh, are, are, are aware of, uh, of things that will make your lives easier. But also, I've asked you to, uh, to ask, add questions on the Etherpad page. And I see that several of you have done so already. We've got uh, a total of eight questions. And I, think, I don't think we'll have any trouble covering all of those in the, in the first 15 minutes, but please uh, continue to add questions if, uh, if you're just arriving or if, you, if something comes to mind as I'm talking, and especially if it's something that you feel is, uh, is holding you back in the class, uh, please do add it to the list. It's likely that you're not the only one with that question. So, um, so let's really make an effort today to, uh, to address anything that might have you confused or that you might feel like you missed. Um, don't don't feel like it's your fault if you missed something because this course is a work in progress and it's entirely possible that uh, that I simply didn't explain something adequately that that was necessary. So uh, I'm going to just jump right in and get to the first question. The first three are just ones that um, that I put in there to kind of get things going. So uh, and I haven't seen people add plus one to them, so I'm going to touch on those really quickly. Um, and then I'll get right to the ones that, that you guys are asking. So, um, so first of all, I want to make sure that everyone knows how to add a comment onto a talk page. It's, this is, uh, the talk pages on Wikipedia are a pretty critical component of how people interact. So we've, it's, it's an important place. Our, our own class talk page is a really important place for you to know about so that you can leave questions in the middle of the week when you're working on your homework. Uh, as questions come up as you're exploring Wikipedia, that's uh, a great way to ask questions right at the time. And uh, Sarah and I try to get to those as quickly as we can. And we also have um, some more experienced students, et cetera, who will often uh, come in and, and help answer your questions. So I'm going to open up the, uh, the talk page in my browser, and we can just take a look at that, and everyone will get a, a sense of what your classmates have been talking about. Some people have been uh, pretty active in using this, but we haven't seen everyone there. So, uh, so I want to take another look. So uh, at the top here, you see this big blue box. Let's see, I'm, I'm going to increase the font size so that it hopefully will show up better on your screen. Oh, I see. I'm cut. Yeah, at the moment, I am not yes. seeing anything. Oh, there we go. Yes. That was my mistake. I'm using two monitors, so I, I uh, yeah, sorry about that. I had it on the wrong monitor. That looks great. So, good. Okay. So, our class talk page is uh, is a bit unlike other talk pages in that we share it with something called Wiki Project Open. Uh, I'm going to get to, I'm going to talk about Wiki Project Open in about 20 minutes or so as I introduce the concept of a Wiki Project. So if that part doesn't make a lot of sense to you, don't worry. Uh, we'll, we'll be covering that shortly. The basic idea is just that this is somewhere that other people in addition to our class who know stuff about Wikipedia and open education uh, might see your questions as well. So you might uh, occasionally see an answer from someone that you've never seen in class. Um, and this, the, the idea of that is, is that you'll get a sense of interacting 
beyond just the limits of our class as you're going through this course. Um, I'm, I'm hearing pings from my, uh, I, I'm going to just check the chat window here. So I, I guess I'm seeing people asking questions and I think, I, so Sarah, I assume you're, you're going to um, let me know if there's something I need to come to there. Um, yep, no problem. Okay. So in general, you can find our talk page in, there are several ways that you can find it. You can type into the Wikipedia search bar, WT, that's short for Wikipedia Talk, colon, open. So that's a shortcut that will take you directly to the page that you're looking at right here, no matter where you are on the English language Wikipedia. Another way that you can get there is when you're looking at any of our course pages, any of the pages that have uh, this banner at the top, uh, and the banner is going to look funny because I've expanded the, the font size right now, but it should, I think you know the one I'm talking about. Um, so you'll see there is a link to that WT colon open in the bottom right of that banner. So you can, uh, you can always click that in the banner to get to the talk page. And also, in general, you can click uh, the talk tab in the upper left. Um, so we've set up redirects. Uh, I haven't, I don't think I've covered the concept of a redirect, but it's basically a way to guide you from one address on Wikipedia to another. So in general, our course pages, our, our course talk pages all redirect to that one central talk page. So we don't have a whole bunch of separate conversations going on. It, it kind of brings our Wikipedia conversation all to that one place. And then once you're at the talk page, uh, you'll see some, some explanation of what it is at the top, this blue box. So it explains that it's the talk page for our course and gives you a few tips on how to use it. Um, it also, if, if you're interested in connecting with this Wik Wiki project open in other ways, there's an email list you could join. None of this is necessary for the class, but, but just in terms of understanding what's going on on the page. Um, that's what the email list is for. Um, there's also a way to have live chats throughout the week uh, with other people, with other Wikipedians. And then there are archives of past conversations from here. But uh, again, all of that is just for context. The real discussion goes, goes on below that. So you'll see this table of contents, which has a header for every question or idea that someone's brought up for discussion. At this point, the page is getting rather long. We're probably going to need to archive it again soon um, so that it just to keep it fresh for, so that it, you don't have to scroll so far to get to the bottom. But the most recent questions are always going to be at the bottom of the page. So if, if you're interested in what the very most recent stuff people are talking about is, uh, you might want to scroll all the way to the bottom or just go into the table of contents and click one of these towards the end. Uh, and you'll see the most recent questions that people have brought up. Um, and it's, it's not always just questions. Sometimes people will come and, and say, hey, I just figured out how to do something interesting. Uh, there's a good example of that. Um, two of our past students who have joined us again for the class, Gating and LitJade, have been doing some work on creating uh, user boxes that you can put on your user page to indicate that you're taking this course. And so uh, you'll see uh, G. Gatton is, uh, is Gating, uh, has left a message here, I created a simple Wikisu user box on my user page. And then there's some discussion about uh, about how it's designed and how to place it on your page. If you didn't understand how to place it on your page, you could just jump into that discussion by clicking the edit button uh, next to Wikisu user box. And then you could put your comment or your question at the bottom. So you'd scroll past all the things that other people have said and just type in your question here. How do I add this to my page? Uh, and then in a talk page, it's all, you, you always want to sign, and the way that you sign is by putting four tildes. That's this little squiggly mark. If you don't remember that, it is in the toolbar up above. Um, so I'm, it's not in my toolbar because I have, uh, I'm signed in in the wrong account. <laughs> but there's a little, uh, there's an icon that shows a pen that you can click and it'll automatically put those four tildes in. So I see, uh, I see someone gasping for air, so I'm going to pause. Uh, I'm, I'm again, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I know I'm going through a lot of detail here.
Let me interrupt for a second, Peter. Um, somehow the uh, chat permissions had been turned off for everybody, so that's why no one was able to do IM until now, and that's why we were getting a bunch of side conversations. I so see. that's just been turned back on, and that is why he meant why he said gasps for air because he sent him a separate message notifying us as to the problem. So chat away, everybody. Sorry about that. Excellent. Okay. Okay, so um, I think that's going to uh, – oh, welcome to another zone. Uh, I, I think that's going to cover um, how we use our chat window for this particular class, or our, our – I'm sorry, our <laughs> – I'm sorry, wrong word – our talk page for this particular class. Um, but as a reminder, every page on Wikipedia has its own talk page. So if you're looking at an article, here, I'm going to just roll the dice. I'm going to click on random article and see what comes up. Uh, so let's, let's say that I was reading this article about Williams versus Bailey, which appears to be a, uh, a court case in England from 1866. So let's say I was reading this article and I thought there was something wrong or I thought that something needed to be added to the article. The best thing to do would be to click the talk icon in the upper left of that page. So now I'm looking at the talk page for this particular article, and I would click, oh, you know what, I, let me just pause for a second and log in on my demo account, I, because I have, my, my preferences are set in unusual ways, so it's not going to look familiar to you. Okay, so now I'm, so this should look more like what you would see. So I'm looking at the talk page for this article, and I would click New Section, and that would let me add a comment or a question. Uh, I might say, I, I was reading in a book that there's this other aspect to the case. I think we should cover it and cite that book. Uh, and then someone else might respond, or they might not. You don't have to leave a message every time you want to edit a page, but if you want to do something major or significant, it's often a good idea because the people who have worked on the article and before are probably keeping an eye on the page. Um, okay, so I'm uh, I'm already getting behind on my questions, so I'm going to jump back to the Etherpad. Um, please do uh, please do put plus one next to questions that you want to hear about. Uh, I'm going to jump down to the next one that has a plus one right now, question six. Uh, and that way I can, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to take all of these questions before in this window before class, but I will come back to the rest uh, after the, the class session, so in the second hour. Okay, so the next question we've got, adding photos. How do you do it? What are sources for copyright-free photos and appropriate photos? Okay, so this, I see some people have already put in some, uh, some answers here, and these are good ones. Um, Wikimedia Commons is... Uh, is a sister site of Wikipedia. So going to Commons, I'm going to just click on this here. Uh, it's going to look like, uh, it's going to look similar to Wikipedia. You notice the icon in the upper left is different, but everything else looks more or less the same. And you can do a search here. So if I wanted a picture of an apple, I could just type in apple, and I should get a lot of results of pictures of apples. So then if I wanted to add one of these to a Wikipedia article, let's say it's the Wikipedia article about apples, I would start by, um, I would want to click on the image. And then once I'm there, now I have the, the address of that file. So it, it's always going to have file and a colon at the beginning, and then the title, and then it's going to, and then it's going to say what format, JPEG. So I would copy that, and then I would uh, put that in the Wikipedia article in brackets. And there's some other code which I'm going to let you uh, figure out on your own, um, just so I don't spend too much time on this question right now. But uh, if you do need to look some of that up, the way that you would do it is on Wikipedia. You would want to type in help images. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm bringing that up from memory. If I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain that's the right address. If someone has a better one, please feel free to correct me. Um, on the next one, someone put Flickr. 
as a suggestion, and Flickr is is a great resource, but you do need to be um, a little careful about how you search it because uh, you, images that are uploaded to Wikipedia generally need to be available under a free license. And so when you're searching Flickr, you want to go, and I'm not going to take the time to demonstrate this right now, but if you have trouble finding it, feel free to ask again and I can come back to it. Um, but you want to go into the advanced search and you want to look for the option uh, about what the file is licensed to be uh, to be used as, and it needs to be possible to reuse it for commercial purposes and to do derivative works to make uh, new versions of the file and reshare it. Those are requirements of uh, of Wikipedia. And Amanda, yes, that's exactly right. You, once you find it on Flickr, you still need to download it and then upload it to Wikimedia Commons before it's possible to insert it into a Wikipedia article. So. Uh, Instructions for all of that, I think, are uh, they're available in the help pages on Wikipedia. So feel free to uh, to go and find those answers yourself. But if you get stuck, if you don't know where to look, uh, ask in the lab session after the class, and I can go into more detail, or leave a message on the class talk page. Um, I see the next question with a plus one is do personal photos taken by me that I want to put on my user page have to be uploaded to Wikimedia Commons first? Yes, they do. Um, and uh, it's, it's generally, it's, it's uh, let's see. So Wikimedia Commons does have some standards about what kinds of photos can be uploaded and what can't. So as a general rule, something has to be useful for an educational purpose uh, to be uploaded to Wiki, Wikimedia Commons. But uh, there's an exception when you're using it on your user page. So if you're, do, if you're at all active on any Wikipedia or Wikimedia project uh, and you have a user page, you've made you know, any contributions really at all, and you want to upload a picture of yourself, that should not be a problem. The places where you might run into problems are um, if, if a friend of yours took the photo, uh, it's, it's important that it's, it's, it's really ideal if that person uploads the photo because the person who owns the rights to it needs to, uh, needs to assert that it's available under a free license. And sometimes people kind of get into trouble by uploading a photo that they didn't take themselves and presenting it as though they did. And believe it or not, Wikipedians will actually call you out on that and say, hey, it's obvious somebody took a photo of you from somewhere else. Why are you saying you took the photo? So uh, again, feel free to ask follow-up questions on this. I'm moving through these rather quickly because I do want to get to the new material. Um, thanks for the time check, Sarah. So uh, I'm going to just take a moment and, uh, and scan through these to see if I'm miss I, I don't want to miss anything that's really important. Um, I do see there's some interest in what should I put on my own user page. That's a great thing to continue to discuss on the, the talk page. I don't think that's going to hold anyone up from completing their work, so I'm not going to take time for that right now. I will come back to it in the lab, though. So when should I leave a question where? I think I've, I've covered that. Uh, how do I add links in my user page and make it look like the other well-organized user pages? So the best way to, um, to experiment with this sort of thing is to find someone else's user page that you like and look and click on the edit button and look at the code that you see. And, uh, and, and normally you can kind of see how it works and copy copy things to your own user page. Um, if you specifically want to make a link, always on Wikipedia, the way that you do that, I'm going to just type this into the etherpad. Uh, putting something between double brackets uh, will create a link to the page with that title. So if there's an article about link, that's the way you would link to it. If you want to link to the article that's called link, but you want it to display saying, this is my link, that's how you would do it, and you put this this vertical bar uh, in between, which is uh, on at least on a U.S. keyboard. That's Shift, and it's the key above the enter the return key. So I am going to oh, I'm, and and lastly, someone asked, is is it four tildes and then your name, or just the tildes? And it is just the tildes. That will when you, as long as you're logged in. The tildes will automatically turn into your name and a timestamp for for when you 
um, for when you left the message. So that, that part is automatic. Okay, so I would the the last thing I wanted to cover here is watch lists. Um, Sarah, can you do a quick poll and ask if people have used the watch list feature at all? If people have added something to their watch list? Absolutely. So at the top of the screen, underneath my talking picture, but above the list of users, you will see there's a check box where you can choose yes or no. Um, if you have used the watch list in some fashion, tick yes. It's a, red, it's a green check mark. And if not, click no. I'm not getting any no's. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. So Glenn uh, reminds us that uh, it, the, so the default behavior of a watch list is that when you edit a page, it will automatically get added to your watch list. So if you've been actively working on pages, your watch list should just be growing naturally. Um, but if you know some some students are a little more timid and haven't haven't been jumping right in and editing pages, so your watch list might not be growing of its own, but you can always intentionally go in and, and, and watch any page that you want. And what I'd like to do, uh, just as a final thing before we jump to the next topic, is let's just all take a moment and add all of the course pages that are listed in our banner. So if, we, if you type in WP colon Wikisu, uh, in the Wikipedia search box. So this is the description page of our, our class. If you click that star, that'll add that to your watch list. And then you can go through the links in the box here, uh, the home page for our course, so the February to February to April 2014 page. Uh, this one is actually kind of a weird page that you can't directly watch. But then the class pages and the WT open page why don't you add each one of those to your watch list? And there's a special trick here. Actually, the classes four, five, and six, we don't yet have a page for those. But you can actually still add those to your watch list so that when we do start building those for the course, they'll show up. So you can click on it as though it was a real page. It's going to show up that it's, there is no page there yet. But you still have that star up there. So you can add that to your watch list. And when we start putting stuff there, you'll find out about it. It'll, it'll show up in your feed. Uh, and if you already have your all the course pages on your watch list, why don't you go and find an article on some topic that interests you that you might want to work on or be interested in uh, and, and add that to your watch list, too. Uh, I'm going to just pause for about 30 seconds here and let people work on their watch lists. Okay, so uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up the um, the review section uh, again. As always, uh, after the the first hour, we will have uh, the remaining hour and a half to get into questions again. So if there was something that I wasn't able to get to, uh, I will certainly get to it after I'm done presenting new material. But let's use the the rest of the class for what it was planned for, which is. Uh, we're going to look at wiki projects, and we're going to look at quality assessment, and I'm going to talk about the final project for the class. Um, the Peter, can I just break in for yes. a second? Yes. People who joined us a little late uh, may have missed that we were collecting questions at the Etherpad just now, and I just pasted in the link um, in the message to Harvard. Um, these are just, this is just a place for people to add a plus one to questions if someone else has already asked something they're interested in or add their own question to the list. And we'll try to get to some of these in the second hour. And feel, if you, feel free to add your own question too if you don't see something someone else has put there. Okay, so let's talk about wiki projects. So a wiki project is a, a wiki project is is a is a concept that developed er, early on with Wikipedia. There was a very small community of people uh, building the site, 
and you know at the very beginning um, if someone created a new article they would probably you know send it to an email list and say hey I just wrote an article about you know the color blue or something like that and and you know all 20 people on the email list might see that and say oh great that's you know and go look at it and see it, add some ideas to it and things like that uh, but as Wikipedia has grown of course it, it it's uh, it doesn't make sense to have one central uh, sort of community like that you wouldn't uh, um, you wouldn't be able to hear yourself think if you tried to uh, pay attention to what everyone all you know tens of thousands of people were doing all the time so the concept of a wiki project evolved and a wiki project is uh, an informal, a very informal in, in most cases, uh, uh, collection of pages that support people with a common interest. So um, I, we just looked at the uh, Wiki Project Open page, uh, or actually we looked at the Wiki Project Open Talk page, which is the one that we use for class. But as you see, I didn't talk about these tabs at the top. Um, but these give you a bit of insight into what the wiki project is about. So the main page for wiki project open is the, this one to the left of the talk page about wiki project open. And this will give you an overview of, of what it's about. And the main thing is right here. Welcome to wiki project open where we aim to improve Wikipedia content, Wikimedia content with the help of openly licensed materials and two, improve Wikipedia articles related to openness, including open access publishing, open educational resources, et cetera. So um, since we decided to join forces with this wiki project uh, so that you students could, uh, could start right off by having an opportunity to see uh, other Wikipedians in action, uh, as it's turned out, this wiki project has been relatively quiet recently, so you will see a few uh, discussion topics brought up by people outside the class mixed in with ours on the on the talk page. Um, but right now, our class really seems to have most of the activity around that. So let's look at a more active wiki project uh, and and get a feel for this. I'm going to pull up. There are lots. Actually, before we do that, let's look at the wiki project directory. So. I'm typing that from memory. Yes, okay, that's right. So uh, this is a page that lists all wiki projects, and you can get a sense for just how many there are. Uh, these are all divided up by, uh, by category. And uh, I'm going to click on one that I just happen to know is a very active one and a very organized one, uh, wiki project military history. Is uh, is one that? Um, sorry, I'm I'm getting to it by a path that I'm not used to. Um, okay, so I'm going to just type this in because I'm <laughs> I'm getting lost. Uh, so uh, this is this is a project that has had a, uh, a regular newsletter that they send out to members on a regular basis. Uh, there, are, uh, there are people who are assigned to, uh, to you know, write content for the newsletter and work articles through the improvement and assessment processes and things like that. So uh, this is a project that has just been, been very productive for a very long time on Wikipedia. Um, you see this has a kind of a similar structure where they have these tabs across the top. Uh, you'll notice the second one over says discussion. That's the same as, as talk. So like our project, uh, these two are going to go to the same place. And if we go to that discussion tab, again, we see some contextual information up at the top. And if we want to see the most recent discussion, we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. And sure enough, we have some comments from today. Uh, let's just look at one. And an opportunity exists to create five new military ship articles and eliminate the red links from the Malaysia Airlines flight. So if you've been following the news, uh, you probably know that a, a major airplane just disappeared. Uh, and so apparently, I mean, I'm just reading this for the first time, but apparently there are five military ships that are somehow related to that story. And so this person is suggesting, let's create some new articles. Uh, 
he says eliminate the red links. So that's a bit of jargon that is hopefully becoming familiar to you by right to you by now. Uh, when a link shows up red on Wikipedia, that means that the page doesn't exist yet. So when he says red links, he means things that people have tried to link to in the past, but they're but when a reader clicks on it, they don't get anywhere because there isn't an article yet. So eliminating a red link usually means creating an article to live where that red link in is, and that turns the link blue. So. Um, let's uh, let's take another brief pause and um, and do another quick activity here. I'm going to go back. So I'm going to type into the screen again: wp colon wiki project directory. And why don't you take? Why don't you go to this page on your own browser? And uh, and we'll take just about a minute here. Uh, look through it, see if you can find a wiki project that is about something you're interested in, and uh, and watch list that. So click on that page and add it to your watch list. Uh, I don't want to take the time right now for you to join the wiki project because that might end up being a little time consuming. But it's it's also it's not that bad. So that's something that we can probably do afterward. Peter, people are wondering sort of abstractly how one joins the wiki project. You know, is, yeah. there, a, is there a permission yeah. process? Is it yeah. complicated? I don't think you need to show up, but I, right. I was just answering in the, in the chat box that usually a wiki project will tell people how to sign up. And it is usually as simple a matter as adding your name to a list, I believe. That's exactly right. So in, when you click on a wiki project, you're generally going to go to the front. So these are categories here. So if I click on Asia, this is going to take me to a page that still has a lot of different wiki projects in it. And now I can find, uh, so there's a, a wiki project Kurdistan. So if I click on this, this is actually a wiki project page. And somewhere here, there's going to be a section. It might look different on different wiki project pages, but somewhere on here, there's going to be an instruction how to join this wiki project. So I'm going to just scroll down. And it looks like this wiki project exists. Prove me wrong, um, because I'm not. It's not as obvious as I would expect it to be. Um, oh, okay. So I do see here. There's a t the, the second tab over says participants. So if I click on that, that's going to give me instructions on how to join. And as Sarah said, it's generally just a matter of adding your username, which you would typically do with the four tildes, just like you would sign a talk page, and um, and adding your name onto the list, and then add the, the wiki project to your talk page. And in most cases, the wiki project isn't really going to come to you. So when you, when you join it, what that means is you're expressing your interest. But then it's still kind of up to you to go and look at that talk page and, uh, and get engaged in some conversations. So it's very easy to join, but also joining doesn't necessarily uh, doesn't necessarily do a lot. It's not like in, in, in most cases you're never going to get a newsletter or anything like that. Um, you might get an occasional, uh, you know, someone else who's looking to reach out to other people, but typically the activity takes place on that Wiki Projects talk page and it's still up to you to add that to your watch list and keep an eye on it. Okay, so uh, Harvard Vegan has a, a question, how do I search for projects? In my area, so this wiki project directory page is, uh, does list all wiki projects. So you can just type this into the search bar, and they're all categories categorized by by area. One thing that you should be aware of is that a lot of wiki projects are sort of ghost towns. Someone set it up, but there's not anyone really actively working there. So be prepared for that. If you join it, you really might not find anyone there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to thank you, Sarah, again for the time check. Uh, I'm still running over a bit. So uh, I'm going to jump on to the next topic. I'm going to just go back to our class page. Let's see. Well, you now what have I done here? I've, While you're working on I've, that, Pete, I would <laughs> jump in and um, encourage.
people who are taking the class who do have an interest in open education to join Wiki Project Open, which is fairly new. Um, and a lot of people feel that the articles that it looks at, which cover both open access articles and journals, and open educational resources related articles, so, you know, massive open online course related articles or articles about um, repositories like Merlot, those are all, those are all sort of addressed by Wiki Project Open. So if you are a person who has interest in those articles, um, Wiki Project Open is a great place to express your interest and, and get involved. Okay, thank you. So the, the last thing I want to cover in class today is how quality assessment works on Wikipedia. Um, and I want to be, uh, I've, I've, I've gotten some feedback in the past that this, uh, this can be a bit overwhelming for some students because uh, what we're going to do right now, or we're, what we're going to do to start this off is look at some of the highest quality content on Wikipedia. Um, and if you haven't, if you haven't happened upon a featured article in the past, um, you know, this really might be a, a big departure from the articles that you've seen. So I want to emphasize there is zero expectation in this class that, that you would write a featured article or a good article um, according to the, the criteria that we're about to explore. Um, it's, it's possible that you could. And if you want to, you're more than welcome to try, but it is, it is by no means required or expected. But I do think it's important to understand kind of the scope of Wikipedia quality. And I think the best way to get at that is to look at the highest standards of what, um, what Wikipedians have agreed constitutes quality on Wikipedia. And we'll see ap after we go through that, that it, it does offer some, some good opportunities, even if you're working at an, on an article at a much simpler level and just getting started with it, uh, there are going to be some ways in which uh, understanding the featured article process is helpful um, in, in your efforts. So uh, please don't expect that the, the stuff that we're looking at right here is the kind of thing that you would be expected to do for your final final project. It's not, um, but I, again, I think understanding the, the general context will be useful. So, uh, so a featured article, so I'm, I'm just looking at the outline. This is where we are in our, our class outline. This is on the week three page for our course. And uh, so I've got three links here. I've got WP colon FA, which is for featured article and then GA, which is for good article, and then DYK, which stands for did you know. And this is sort of in descending order of quality. A featured article, this concept originally came up when Wikipedians asked the question, well, what are we going to feature on the main page of Wikipedia? You know, we, we want to have our, our, when our readers come to Wikipedia without going to a specific article, they should see some of our best content. So how do we determine what our best content is and, uh, and, and present that? So what that has evolved into, if I click on WPFA, or again, if I, I could type this into the search bar, this takes me to a list of every featured article on Wikipedia. And it tells us here there are 4,192 featured articles out of 4 million articles on Wikipedia. This ratio has actually been fairly consistent throughout Wikipedia's history that about one in 1,000 articles uh, get to the featured article status. And then below this, below this introductory section is a list of all the all of those 4,000 and some featured articles. Again, they're, they're kept by, um, by topic. So if we were to click education, that's going to jump us down to this section. And you'll see these, this is a list of all the featured articles that have to do with education. Uh, I'm going to click it, click on one, um, Let's see, let's, let's take a look at, um, I'm going to just click University of California, Riverside. I haven't looked at this one in a while. So I think if, if we were to spend some time looking through this article, uh, you'd probably find that it, it, it really is a very nicely formatted article. The language is, is 
generally very good. Um, it's going to be very thorough, and we're going to see we're, we're going to take a look at why that is in a moment. So you see, there's a nice info box in the upper right. There's a, a good sized lead section that almost uh, constitutes an entire article in itself. So if you were just looking for a general overview about the school, about this university, you could just read that lead section and you would get a pretty good sense of it. And then we go down to the table of contents section, and it's it's substantial, but it's very well organized. You see there are some sub subsections here. Um, and there's a uh, for something like a university, it's usually going to be a fairly standard um, set of, of, uh, of sections, history, campus, academics, et cetera. Um, and we're also going to find it's generally going to be very well illustrated. Uh, this isn't a very old university, but if it, if it was, you'd probably see photographs here from the 19th century and going through all phases of the university's development, et cetera. And then finally, if we go down to the last section, we're going to see the, the references. I see 134 footnotes, and they're all very nicely formatted. It's not just a, a bare link, but it gives the actual bibliographic format where it tells you the author and the title and the publication it was published in. So where do these standards get, get documented? Well, if we type, so the shortcut to this is WP colon FA question mark. So this is the featured article criteria. There are some other shortcuts that will get you there as well. Uh, you can see the shortcuts listed in the, in the upper right here, FACR, or I don't even know what this WIAFA is. What is a featured article, I think? Um, so this shows you a list of specific criteria. So there are, uh, are four general criteria. So the, the first one has to do with the writing quality. It's well written, it's comprehensive, it's well researched, it's neutral, and it's stable. Uh, number two is about formatting, so it follows the style guidelines. So this is about the, the, the general structure of the article. Number three, it's appropriately illustrated. It has media if it has to do with, uh, maybe it's an article about a song. It should have a, an audio clip. Uh, so you know, not necessarily just photographs. It could be video. It could be audio. Uh, and the length, the length of the article should be appropriate to the topic. So of course, these are all subjective measures. And so how do those subjective measures get evaluated? Well, typically what, it, what will happen is that someone who has worked on a Wikipedia article for a long time and they've been thinking about these criteria as they do it, they've been trying to meet these criteria, uh, they'll get to a point where they typically will nominate their own article for a featured article. And so the shortcut to the page where all of this happens is WP colon FAC for featured article candidates. And this, <clears throat> excuse me, this blue section at the top is going to give you a whole uh, rundown of how it works. So if you wanted to nominate an article, it would explain how. But basically what you would do is you would enter a nomination below. So uh, here we can see a list of many different articles uh, that have been nominated. So these are all, uh, this is the table of contents, so these will all show up on this page. Let's just click on one geology hall. I don't, I don't know what this is, uh, but this tells us who nominated the article. And again, typically those are people who have put work into the article. And they explain why they're nominating it, what their process has been that brought them to the point of nominating the article. And then below that, we'll see there are, other people will come along and they'll leave comments. And the comments ideally are in reference to that list of criteria. So this person says, good piece of work. He's leaning heavily towards supporting it as a featured article, but he does have a few thoughts. Uh, so, and he, and he doesn't seem to think any of these are major deal breakers, but they seem worth bringing up. So this is, this is typical. Uh, often a nomination will last usually for a few weeks, and usually the article will continue to get improved during that time. So people will have feedback. Uh, they might say, it's, I think it's good enough to be a, far, a featured article, but here are some things you might want to think about. Or they might say, I oppose this being named a featured article, but here are some things that if you address them, I would change my vote to support. Um, 
so these can really vary widely, uh, but they can be really informative about the um, about what that that process looks like. So something that you might want to do, and this I think especially for our returning students, this might be an interesting exercise, is go to that featured article page, find one of these uh, nominations, and just just read it. Just click on, and and this would be one that's that's currently undergoing review. Just read through what what people have to say about it. You might want to read the article and read the comments and compare, and then see if you agree with them. Uh, maybe someone is critiquing the way it's structured, and and maybe you don't. Maybe you think it's structured just fine, or maybe you have a different idea. If you find yourself having your own opinion, then please post it in there. That's this is a very open process. Um, the 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 one thing that's a little unusual for Wikipedia is that this process does get um, it does get evaluated by an elected uh, person who can who can basically judge the consensus at the end and decide whether or not it becomes a featured article. But usually that's a pretty straightforward call. Usually it becomes pretty clear that uh, that people generally feel like it should be a featured article or they feel like it's not ready yet. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to go back to our this is our course outline. Let's see. Um, Pete, did you mention yeah. to people about how they can tell when they're looking at a featured article? Oh no, I didn't. Thank you. Um, so well, the way I just thought of it was I just I went in through the uh, Wikipedia the good old Wikipedia homepage, which happens to be a handy way to get to a featured article. Yeah. I just came to another one through the, the featured article page too. Uh, and so anything that has been successfully through that featured article process will have a gold star in the upper right corner. Um, and also we're about to look at the good article process, which is similar. And so if you see a green circle in the upper right, that means that it's been through the good article process successfully. Uh, also, uh, on the talk page, for the article, you'll see a box up at the top. So you see a big bold star here. So it's a, this, art, this is a featured article. It gives you a link. So it says article milestones here. And if you click show, that's going to show that it's, it's been, first it was a good article, and then it was a featured article. And if you click on these, these bold lines, this will take you to the discussion that evaluated that. So if you, if you want to see what people were considering as they were thinking about whether it was good enough or not, uh, you can always go back and look at that. And you can also, you can nominate something to be reviewed. Sometimes an article is about a topic that's rapidly evolving, like it's in the news today and, and someone puts a lot of work into it, but then maybe people kind of move on and nobody works on it for a while and that topic continues to evolve. There's more news about it. Maybe it's a biography of a person and, you know, maybe it's an artist and they release several new albums and their career takes major steps and the Wikipedia article doesn't really keep pace. You can always suggest that the featured status be removed from that article. Sometimes, again, making that suggestion will be the thing that stimulates people to actually update it so that it can keep its status. Um, so all of this is, is, is kind of a natural part of how Wikipedia moves forward. And, uh, it, you know, it might seem like a really obnoxious thing to, uh, to suggest a review of someone's article that they put all that hard work into, but in practice, it's not something that people take offense to. It's just a normal thing that happens, and uh, and often people are are happy to have the the feedback and the renewed interest in in the article that they're work, working on. So, I'm not going to go into as much detail, just in the interest of time, on what a good article is, but I'll I'll tell you that the structure of the pages is about the same. So again, if we if we go to WP colon GA. We'll get a list of all the good articles on Wikipedia in a categorized format. Again, uh, there is a list of criteria. Um, the link is, uh, I think, in the in the uh, course outline today. Um, the one principal difference is that with a good article, you make your nomination. Uh, well, your nomination will show up here if you follow the the instructions that you. find here, but the discussion actually happens on that article's talk page, and it's only one person that needs to review it. So with a featured article, anyone can comment on it, and it's generally not considered to be 
sufficient unless a number of people have weighed in with various different perspectives. With a good article, the criteria are a little more lightweight. It doesn't have to be as comprehensive. It doesn't have to um, you know, be quite as heavily referenced, things like that. Um, and also, it's just up to one person to review it. And again, there'll usually be some back and forth there. Um, but it's, uh, it, it, it can happen more quickly than a featured article. Uh, it kind of depends. Sometimes there's a big backlog. There might be, you know, hundreds of nominations and not so many people working through them these days. Um, so I, I would say for either of these processes, you probably want to expect like at least a month uh, to get through it. Um, but, uh, but let's look at a process that is a little bit more uh, close to the time frame and the, uh, the level of this course which is the did you know process. So I don't know if, if you've noticed, if you go to the, um, to the main page of Wikipedia, and I'm gonna get there just by clicking on the logo. So uh, Sarah just observed that there's always a, a featured article in the upper left. Um, but if you scroll down from there a little bit, there's this section called did you know? And this rotates, I think every six hours, something, something like that. And you'll see that there, each, each sentence, so there's a, a short sentence. Did you know that Ellie Yunara went, uh, went from film star to housewife after her marriage to, so, uh, you know, there'll be sort of a brief fact pulled from a Wikipedia article. The bolded uh, link is the article that is, uh, that is being featured as a did you know. So you'll find some other links that are not bold face throughout here. Um, and, what this indicates, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on one here, the Deary Inn. So we just looked at a, a featured article, and let's look at this article. We've got seven references here. It fits in about three screens here as I scroll through the whole thing. It only has the one main section. It doesn't have any, uh, any sections before you get to references. So this is clearly a very different scale. And this is, uh, this is a, a, a pretty good example of the kind of thing you'd be expected to do for your final project in this class. So um, the idea of did you know is that you would create an article that's a good step towards uh, a good article or a featured article. It's not, there's no expectation that it's complete. Um, there's no expectation that every single sentence uh, would have a, a high quality citation or that you would have tracked down lots of photos or anything like that. Uh, but it does have some standards. So let's take a look at those standards. Uh, I'm going to click on uh, WP colon DYK from our class page. So this is going to describe how that process works. And you see in the upper right here, there are shortcuts to the various um, different pages associated with this process. So the um, Let's see, so I believe it's the reviewing guide is what I'm, no, maybe it's right on this, I, I actually did not remind myself of this and the, uh, the, the process has changed a little since I last went through it. Um, does someone see, oh, eligibility criteria, this is what I'm looking for. So it is right here on the, the DYK page. So an article needs to be new, um, and this is no more than five days old. So this is something that you're expected to do rather rapidly. Um, there are a couple of exceptions to this, but, uh, but they're kind of unusual. If you take a very, very short article that already exists and you do a really substantial uh, expansion to it, which is I think about five times the length, uh, then that could qualify for DYK, but that's, that's kind of an unusual case. If you do find yourself finding a stub article that you want to work on, uh, feel free to ask some questions. I'd be happy to guide you through uh, how to nominate it for DYK. Uh, and so there is a, a minimum number of characters. It needs to be 1,500 characters of prose. And so that doesn't include like the coding that goes into info boxes and things like that. This is the actual text of the article. Um, it, it, it needs to, if, if there are images in it, they need to comply with Wikipedia policies. And so there are a few other requirements as well. There's some guidelines around the hook, which is the sentence that's pulled to go on the front page. 
So it, it needs to be phrased in a way that's, uh, you know, that, that complies with certain standards. I'm not going to go through all of these uh, in detail right now, but I do think this is something if you're, if you're interested in starting a Wikipedia article from scratch or taking a tiny sub article and expanding it as your final pro project for the class, uh, you might want to go through this. this is, the DYK process is not at all required for this class, but it is a good guide. If you, if you get through the DYK process, uh, then you certainly would fulfill the requirements of this course and of the Wikisu Burba badge. Uh, there are other ways to fulfill those requirements as well, but this, this might be a good avenue to take. So um, I'm going to just pause and look at our chat window and see what I've missed. Yeah, it looks like we're getting some more questions coming in. So we are right at the end of the hour. Uh, I did. I've, I've made some mention about the final project, and I want to. Uh, I want to come back and talk about that a little more here. Um, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna just talk about the final project a little bit, and then I think we can take a break and come back and come back to questions. Um, if you are looking at our, our class page, you'll find a link to the final project. Oh, in the well, here here it is in the uh, in the box on the right next to the class outline. So the final project is the main uh, the main project you'll do for this class. You have until the end of week six to complete it. Um, and as it says here, you can either choose an existing Wikipedia article to improve, or you can start a new Wikipedia article and bring it up at least to start class. Now, I'm I'm actually just realizing I I missed the I talked a lot about uh, featured article and good article. I didn't talk about the more incremental, uh, lower quality assessment levels. Um, there is a link here though that will that will give you a basic explanation of those. Uh, so here we have featured article, FA, and below that, uh, GA. We're going to ignore a, a class that's a pretty unusual one that doesn't get used very much. And then below that, um, you'll see B class, C class, start class, and stub. Uh, and so this this is uh, is the, the quality scale that all Wikipedia articles are are evaluated on. Um, typically, anything below good article class is defined by a wiki project. So the, the specific language, this is, this is the most general description that we're looking at right here. But if we were looking at like wiki project film, for example, that um, concerns itself with, with, uh, with movies, their standards for a start class versus a C class article might be really specific to film. They might say, uh, for a film article to be considered C-class, it needs to at least contain the main stars and the director and the producer. Uh, it needs to name the studio. It needs to say something about the making of the film, you know, something like that. So it's, it gets more specific than the general language that you'll see here. Um, but this is the general language that all of those wiki project assessments are, are based in. So. Uh, I am uh, there, there's there's more to say about these other uh, assessments. So certainly, as you as you pick your final project and uh, want to look at what you're going to be comparing against, um, we will get into those details. But for now, let let me just go back to this final project description. Uh, the the main thing that you want to do is bring it up to at least if you're starting a new article or or taking a stub. Uh, you want to at least bring it up to start class, and it should be a strong start start class. Uh, it's, you'll you'll probably find many articles on Wikipedia that are labeled as start class that don't actually uh, meet the standards. And the main thing is is having a fair number of references and citations. Um, so there are many articles on Wikipedia that are labeled start class that only have like one citation, um, and they probably really shouldn't be labeled as start class. So for this class. Uh, I would say you should at least have four or five citations in an article. Um, 
or if you find a, a start class article that you want to improve, then you would want to improve that at least to C class. Now for this course, you don't have to go through a formal assessment project uh, to get that assessment. What you're going to need to do at the end is tell us what you did. You're going to, you're going to fill in a, uh, a form that explains what you did for your final project, and you're going to explain to us why you think it is a um, why you think it's a better uh, like one one step up on the quality assessment scale. So if if you can get an assessment in the time frame of this course, that's great, but it's not required. Um, and and that's the, the the process on Wikipedia isn't really as formal either. So generally, what I'll do in evaluating those is if I agree with you that this has moved from a start class to a C class, I'll just change the assessment from a start class to a C class. I wouldn't do that with a good article because that would be kind of considered a conflict of interest. You should get someone who's independent, who you haven't worked with, uh, to read the article to give it one of those higher, uh, one of those higher statuses. Uh, but for the lower ones, it's really just a matter of kind of keeping track of a whole lot of different articles, and nobody's really worried about uh, whether someone, you know, whether there's a disagreement that something is start class versus C class versus B class. So that is the material that I wanted to cover in class today. If anyone has any quick clarifying questions, uh, why don't you put them in the chat window right now, but otherwise, uh, and, and I'll work through those if, if there's anything really quick and pressing. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's take a break until, uh, I'm just double checking what time it is right now. Um, I would say 25 past the hour. Um, and then we can come back and delve in in more depth. Ah, okay, so another zone, that's, I, I, that's an excellent question. I, I will relish the opportunity to delve into that after the break. Yeah, that's the kind of thing he really likes to do, sort of roll up the sleeves and look at that stuff and explain to us how it works, which is pretty great. And for people who are going to take a break and then come back in, I think, Peter is proposing 20 minutes, if I understand yep. correctly. Um, you might want to go to the Etherpad, look at the existing questions people have been posting there, and I'm going to paste the link into the IM box now. And put a plus one next to any question that is your question, too, because that could help us figure out what to cover in the next half. I mean, literally, just go in and put a plus one next to an existing question if you see something that you'd really like to know the answer to as well. Seems like a good way to sort of um, come to a consensus about what we are going to talk about. So Absolutely. we will hopefully see a bunch of you in a little bit. Great. Uh, we do have a question from Luis, and I've gotten this from several people uh, on the class talk page and an email. Um, is it okay if you choose uh, an article in Spanish for your final project? Yes, absolutely. Um, and we've had students uh, do that in the past. We had a, a student who earned the badge, I think, in our, I think it was our first class session by working on the Open Educational Resources article in Spanish. Um, uh, I would just ask your patience if you choose to do that, because uh, I don't speak very much Spanish. Uh, I do speak a, a tiny bit. Um, but what I'm going to do in evaluating that is I'm going to I'm going to reach out to some other Wikipedians uh, who do speak Spanish and ask for their take on it. And uh, it's just it's probably going to take me a little bit longer to evaluate that. But again, uh, your the main thing is that that you are convinced that you've uh, that you've accomplished that level and explain your explanation to me is going to be the first thing that I consider and. Uh, you know, if you genuinely believe that you've improved the article according to those criteria, uh, then you're probably right, and you'll probably earn the badge. Um, so please do uh, work on an article in any language that you want to. Uh, if we, if that means that I need to find someone uh, who's fluent in that language to look at it, I will do it. If I can't find someone who speaks that language, uh, I'll rely on Google Translate, and we'll find a way to, to move forward. So Peter, a related question while while you're talking about that, um, 
that came up on our talk page was about the unified login. Someone was saying when she logs in to um, yep. the English version, yep. she could see her user page, but then when she goes to the Spanish version, her username is there, but it's red because yes. there's no content. And maybe people have been wondering about that too. Right. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna. So I did. Uh, I believe I answered that on the the course talk page. Uh, so that's a. If if you have that question, you might want to go there to review my answer. Oh, I'm gonna I'll just really briefly. Time. I'm sorry. I think I did. I said it's all happening in real time. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. So I, I I will I will get into that after the break a little bit. Uh, but yes, let's. I, I see people are already uh, stepping away. So let's come back at 25 after the hour. So in about 15 minutes now, 16 minutes, and uh, I will jump into these questions. So see you then. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back from break, everybody. I've been reading through the questions and answering some of them in the Etherpad. Uh, I really I like this format. I think um, I think we've happened upon something good here. It's it's great to see questions collected in one place like this. It makes me it, it gives me a really good sense of what is on your minds and uh, what we need to focus on. So I think maybe we'll keep this format in the future where we can use the Blackboard Collaborate chat window for kind of more ephemeral chat. And we can use the Etherpad uh, when there's a question that you want to make sure that I see uh, and that we get back to in the lab session. So great questions. And, and it's fantastic that uh, some of you are taking it upon yourself to answer each other's questions makes it a lot easier for me and uh, and and it's it's also great to see that uh, that a lot of you are are learning the answers to these on your own and we're developing a variety of, of knowledge within the class so <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in I think we need a new I think we need to adopt a new convention for marking a question as having been answered so maybe uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just leave that as an open question. If someone has an idea, if you want to like maybe choose a symbol to put at the beginning of a line or something like that, if uh, if you feel like I've dealt with a question and it's been covered, uh, why don't you uh, feel free to just start marking them? And if nothing has come up, we can circle back to that, and I'll I'll come up with something. Um, so I am going to let's see. I see that question number two has a couple plus ones. What should I put on my own user page? So uh, I think the I think the 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 main the best way to explore this question is by looking at other people's user pages, and uh, our our own class is a a great resource for that. So let me go to the back to the screen share. Oh. 
Um, so on our, if, if you go to our course homepage by clicking February to April 2014 uh, and scroll down, the last section has a list of everyone enrolled in the class. And you'll see the, the blue links at the beginning of the line, that means that you have a classmate who has created a, a user page. So there are still some people in the class that haven't created a user page at all, that's fine. Um, but if you click on any of these blue ones, you'll see what other people are doing. So I'm going to just scroll down. I'm going to click on someone I haven't looked at in, in the class before. So here's one, uh, a study in Taiwan. And so here we have a, a sentence about, uh, about who this person is and what they're trying to do. And then under that, you've got a little table. So you might not know how to make a table on Wikipedia, but if you click edit for this section, you're going to get a little bit of a lesson on it. So you can look at the formatting that this person has created and how they, how they went about creating a table there. And if you, if you feel like tinkering, you can just copy and paste that onto your own user page and start replacing the text to make it into your own table. So this is a really good way not only to fill out your user page, but also to learn various bits of code on Wikipedia. Also, Pete, um, to break in, it's really nice sometimes to look at the code and open a second browser that shows the finished product side by side. You can say, okay, so if you type this, it ends up looking like this. That's a, yeah, and there's actually, you can even do that kind of in the same window. Uh, so what I usually do for that is I'll, I'll click edit, and then let's say I wanted to change the word category to tag, and I wanted to change, uh, I wanted to see if I can uh, make this red. So let's say I just guessed, and I put tags that say red on either side of it. Uh, you know, maybe I know a little bit of HTML, and I wonder if it's gonna, if that's going to work. Um, and I want to see how this is working. I can just scroll down and click on the Show Preview button. And this gives me a preview. You can see that where it said cat Category, now it does say Tag. But those tags, to turn that red, didn't work the way that I wanted them to. So I can now see the results of the code up at the top, and I can see the code here, and I can keep playing with it without actually saving a page. Um, one, one thing that's come up uh, in the past is the idea of user boxes. So let's see, I'm going to just click on another uh, random class member. And I don't remember who has added user boxes. I'm just going to click through some quickly here until I find something. Um, OK, so here's one. This user is a member of Wiki Project Kit Verde. So uh, this is perhaps someone that is, uh, that's on our call right now. And uh, if so, feel free to speak up in the chat window. Um, so someone who has joined a wiki project and has chosen to indicate that they're a member of that wiki project right on their user page. So if you wanted to join that, that same wiki project and do the same thing, again, you would want to click on the edit window and find the code that corresponds to it, and you could just copy and paste that right onto your own uh, your own user page. So this the user boxes like this, they kind of work like trading cards, or like you know, often often uh, users will they'll they'll find a user box by because they get to know someone through working on an article. They're looking at someone's user page. Uh, and they see something, maybe it's funny, or maybe it's, you know, they relate to it. It uh, identifies that they are a fan of the same sports team or something like that. And so they'll just copy and paste that into their own user page. So let me go back to our Etherpad. I'm going to move on to another question. Again, though, uh, this is a great thing to discuss. If you want to get into some more details, just leave a, a note on the class talk page, and I'm sure someone will jump in and give you some fresh ideas. So let's see, the next one um, with a couple of plus ones, how to create an archive on a user talk page. So I'm going down to question 11 here. And um, so this, this, is a, this is a good one to cover. This is, this is kind of an advanced thing to do. Um, 
but I have, so on my regular user, so I'm looking at my demo user account now, but on my regular user account, I do have an archiving uh, system set up. I'm going to show you that in a moment, but actually before I get to that, let me, let me, let me, let me point out a more basic approach. Really all a, an archive is at its most basic is just that you, you copy what was on the page onto a different page and you make a link to it. So the most basic answer to that is you don't need to really know anything fancy. You could just, if you go to your talk page, um, and, oh, I see, this, this actually redirects to my, my regular uh, user talk page. So here you do see there are the, some archives that I have. Um, but if I wanted to archive some things here, I could just do it manually. I just click on the edit button. I could pick uh, whichever sections seem like they're kind of out of date and just copy, or I would, I would just drag through them and actually cut, probably not copy so that they actually disappear out of here. And I would save that, I would click save page. I'm not going to right now because I don't actually want to do this. And then I would create a new page um, by, so I, I might go to the top of my user talk page and I would just create a link to something that doesn't exist yet. So I might say user talk colon Pete Forsyth. So this is, so far, this is just the address of the page that I'm on, as you can see up here, right? And then I would put a slash. This makes it a subpage of this page. And let's say I would call it like Pete's Archive. You can call it anything you want to. So now when I save this page, and I'm going to, I'll just preview so that you can see it here without me actually having to save it. Now you have a nice red link at the top of the page with that address that you just typed in. So we, we just copied all of that material. So after saving this page, I would click on that red link. That would take me to this blank window so that I can create a new page. And I would paste everything I had in there. So that becomes my archive. So that's the most uh, sort of do-it-yourself approach to creating an archive. If you want to there are, there are bots, there are uh, automated processes on Wikipedia that will, uh, that will take care of it for you. They'll monitor your talk page and every time there's a topic that's at least two weeks old uh, that nobody has commented on in the last few days uh, and all of these parameters are adjustable, it will pull those into an archive and, and create a nice system for you. So if you want to do that, uh, I would suggest that you look at, so MizaBot is the, is the main bot that deals with that. And I'm going to just click, I'm going to go to my user talk page. This top section is the main thing that, uh, that calls in MizaBot and says, hey, can you do archives on my page? So if you want to learn more about that, just take this, this first part, user. M-I-S-Z-A bot and type that into the, some, somebody copy and paste this into the etherpad user. Uh, and if you go to this user page, it's going to explain to you how to set that up. And it might take a little bit of tinkering to kind of make sure you get it right, but all the information that you need is here. Uh, again, if you try it and you get confused, post a question on the class talk page and we'll get it sorted out. So Pete, I have a feeling that not very many new users are going to be archiving talk pages because most most of them don't have very much on their talk pages yet. So it's the kind of thing that if it looked a little bit complicated, you really don't need to worry about it just yet. But it's good to know how, how that works and the fact that sometimes there can be t a lot of items that have been posted that you're not seeing because someone has gone in and archived them that way. Yes, thanks for pointing that out, Sarah. Um, I think this is a this is a recurring thing in this class that um, people have questions that are good questions and interesting um, and and worth going into, uh, but they also can be a little bit intimidating when we get to it because it can be you know complicated to set up or maybe it doesn't apply to something you actually need to do. Um, so 
especially in these lab sections where I'm where I'm answering questions from the class, if something just seems over your head and uninteresting, don't worry about it. You're you know follow as much as you want to, and if you want to just kind of tune out for that one because it doesn't apply to what you're trying to do, that's perfectly fine. So, okay, so let's go on to another question here. Um, oh, I do see question 13. Uh, I don't know who put that in, but this is the, somebody put a, uploaded a, a screenshot of something that just looks terrible. <laughs> on, that our, our course page is just looking really bad on their computer. So this is not something that I've been aware of. If somebody asked this before and I missed it, uh, my apologies for that. Um, Can we take a this, poll and see if other people have seen that? Can people yeah. go, go ahead check that? that looks like this where everything is all crashing together and you can't read it? We're getting a lot Hopefully of news. Hopefully it's not widespread. I think this is, I think this is something um if anybody is still having this problem uh, oh so chris was it was it you that had the problem? yeah, Chris is the one who posted it and is so far the only okay. person who's checked yes okay, so and this is still a problem for you chris okay well um I think this is something let's let's uh i'm not I'm not really sure what to do here because I don't want to take a lot of time with it. Uh, for everyone else in the class, but it is definitely something we should figure out. Um, yeah, if, I think we should work on that offline since it's just affecting one user right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think if, um, I guess my, my main question is, is it only our course pages that you're seeing this with or is it other Wikipedia pages too? Um, and I guess, if, if you're able to stay a little bit after class, we could we could talk about it then, or if not, maybe you could uh, leave a message on the talk page. Maybe we can go to email. Um, and and I think the important thing for me to know would be what uh, I, I see you're using Chrome, but if you could tell me what version of it you're using, that might help. Uh, what version of I think it's Windows you're using. People are oh. theorizing that it may have to do with turning on certain beta features. Uh huh. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a possibility, or preferences, yeah. Well, okay, so uh, sounds like we can maybe talk about it after class, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's see what else we've got here. Question 17, how do you as a project member or not add stub articles and other small articles or ideas into that project? Okay, um, so this is, this is good. This is this is something I wanted to cover uh, in the class section. Although um, this is also a little bit high level because it implies that someone is creating articles already, as opposed to just diving into their first edits. Right. So this is 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 something I I think uh, I think it's worthwhile uh, for everybody to have a general understanding of how this works, but it's definitely an area where you you shouldn't. You shouldn't feel that this is something you have to actually participate in. Um, but if you're if you're seeing article assessment going on around you, it might be helpful to kind of have an understanding what's going on with that. So let me show you a few things uh, relevant to that. I'm going to start off. I'm going to click random article here again. So we'll just see what we come up with. So it looks like this is a, a video game. So if we want to know what wiki projects have an interest in this game and how they've assessed the article, we find that out by clicking on the talk page. And as you're probably starting to recognize, there are these beige boxes typically at the top. Uh, the first one actually is it's familiar in a different way. This tells us that this has been listed as a good article. So, and if we want to know um, how that decision was reached, as we remember from earlier, we can click on show here and then click on the good article nominee. That's going to take us to the discussion where someone nominated their article and someone else reviewed it. But that part is not actually part of a wiki project. But this one below is. So typically, wiki projects will be listed here. And sometimes you will find that multiple different wiki projects have expressed interest in an article. I've seen examples where it's like six or seven uh, different wiki projects. If, if something is a topic that 
uh, maybe is of interest to a geographical area and also an academic discipline and also fans of a certain sports team, uh, all of those wiki projects might uh, express an interest in the article. It doesn't mean that they own the article. It doesn't mean that they have final say on anything. It just means that it's something that they're keeping track of and that they would like to, to see it improved as part of their efforts to uh, improve coverage of that topic on Wikipedia. So uh, on the lower left side for each wiki project, you will typically see ratings. So here we have GA, that, uh, that green circle might be familiar if you uh, went ahead and looked at the good article pages earlier in the class. So it tells us first this article has been rated as GA class on the project's quality scale. And if you're interested in this particular wiki project's quality scale and how they, you, you might remember I, I used uh, wiki project film as an example before to say that like a C class article might have specific things to film. Uh, this is where you would learn about that. Like if, it, if, it, if, if they say, you know, so for wiki project video games, maybe for it to be a C class article, it needs to at least uh, mention the name of the company that created it and the, uh, uh, the, the, the category of game, whether it's a, um, a two-dimensional game or a three-dimensional game, I don't know, something like that. Um, so the quality scale would be where that lives. And then below that you see there's an important scale also. So this is separate. So how important is this topic to that wiki project? Uh, if multiple wiki projects are considering this one article, ideally they would all agree on the quality rating but they might disagree on the importance rating. So uh, an article about um, Washington, D.C. might be considered top importance to the United States, but it might be considered uh, low importance or mid importance to wiki project uh, capital cities, you know, because it's only one of many capital cities in the world. Um, so that's, it's perfectly fine for those importance ratings to be different, but the, the quality ratings ideally would be kind of synced up. You, you run into cases where there's some disagreement. It's not really a big deal. Um, usually what that reflects when you see differences is that it was just assessed at a different time. So maybe the article has improved a whole lot and nobody from Wiki Project Video Games has bothered to update the assessment since somebody's worked, worked on it. So I'm gonna click random article again uh, to find something that hasn't been to, through a formal assessment project, like good article. So let's look at this one. So this is an article about some villages. So this is a stub article. So this is all the way at the other end of the quality scale. Uh, that means it's, it's an article that's just starting out. Let's take another quick look at the article. This is actually a pretty long article for a stub. A stub might just be one or two sentences. Here we have several paragraphs. We have a see also item. We do have a reference and some graphics. So, you know, you might find that someone would consider this a start class article. This is sort of starting to get into a, a gray area. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the original question. Oh, so so the, the question was about how these assessments get, get placed and who does it. If you're a member of a wiki project, you are welcome and encouraged to add articles to the wiki project uh, and to add your assessment of them. So Unlike the things that we looked at before around featured article and good article, there is no complicated process around the lower quality ratings. So if I, let, let's, I'm gonna go back to the talk page and we'll just see what the code is that, that gets put in. So I'm gonna click on edit. And in this case, this is a nice example because there's only one line in here uh, in the talk page. Nobody's had any discussion about this or anything. So this shows us that this is a template called Wiki Project Faroe Islands. And so let's just, I'm gonna just delete this part that says class equals stub. And I'm gonna do preview. So for this Wiki Project, just adding that template to the talk page adds this big, big beige box to the top. And it leaves question marks for the ratings. So when we have class equals stub, you're gonna see when I refresh it that those, um, those question marks disappear. That's where the stub rating comes in. So now we have a red box that says stub. And if I wanted to give it an importance rating, 
I would put importance equals top. So if it's top importance to that wiki project. So all of this is going to, you're going to find this in the pages of the wiki project uh, describing exactly how to do this stuff. But this is, and, and I got something wrong there. I think I just did a typo. Um, so if you don't type it in right, it's not going to, it's not going to show up right. So uh, this is the kind of thing that, that people might discuss on the talk page of the wiki project. Uh, sometimes there's a big drive for a wiki project to add a whole bunch of articles. Um, but for the most part, you're, you're just welcome and encouraged to do that when you join a wiki project. If you find an article that's not, that doesn't have this tag, just go ahead and add it. Um, oh, I see. Oh, so uh, EJade is, uh, is bringing me back to the original question, which maybe I misinterpreted a little bit, how to add a stub idea, et cetera, to a project. So I was, okay. So my interpretation of that uh, was how to add a, like if there's an existing stub, how to bring it into the wiki project. And so that's, that's what I was discussing here. Basically just by adding this tag to the article's talk page, that brings this article into that wiki project. Um, but if you just want to bring up an idea at a wiki project, um, or ask a question, or just, or announce, uh, I'm going to, you know, I noticed that these 20 articles all could use uh, a new image. So over the next couple of months, I'm going to go out with my camera and I'm going to illustrate these 20 articles. Um, the place that you would do something like that is on the wiki project's talk page. And that's really, for most wiki projects, that's where all the action is, is on the wiki project's talk page. So here, let's look at wiki project Faroe Islands as an example, since we're here. So I would start by clicking on the main link to wiki project Faroe Islands. And, and, you know, I might pause and read about this wiki project a little bit, but then I would just go to its talk page. And as we can see here, there are a whole lot of discussion topics. Um, before posting something, I might be curious how active is this wiki project. So I might go down to the bottom and just look at the, the dates. Uh, and in this case, you can see the most recent comment was in August of last year. So that's, that's going to help me set my expectations of how likely is it that I'm going to get a response. Maybe not so likely. Maybe nobody is going to see my comment for a while. A lot of wiki projects are just like that. There's sometimes they get really busy and sometimes people drift away. Um, but then I would just add a, add a just, just like we do for our class talk page, I would click on new section. I would add a, a headline. I just got a new camera. And then say, you know, there, I, I noticed that three of these islands need photographs. I have a camera. I have a boat. I'm going to go out and take some photos and add them to the articles. And, you know, does anyone want to join me? Does anyone want to uh, go out and take pictures with me or help me think about uh, the best things to photograph? Things like that uh, are, are very common wiki project discussions. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, so I think I covered, do articles end up in multiple projects? Question 18. Um, let's see, question 19, what are some guidelines for assigning Wikipedia contributions in the classroom? This came up in chat. What's a reasonable amount of time for a student to get an article to good article status? Is that a four week project, et cetera? So I see we have, someone has dropped in a very helpful link here. Thank you very much. Um, so there is a whole uh, education program on Wikipedia designed to support educators in figuring out what's an appropriate assignment for their class. Um, I, I, I think this is a, a bit of a complex question, so you probably would want to, uh, to consult this and, uh, and, uh, and maybe uh, I, th I think is, so there like on this this uh for educators page you're going to find a lot of different resources and there is a there's an education notice board that's a good talk page to bring up questions like this so uh again i think this is something that i i, I would rather handle in detail on the talk page rather than taking up a lot of class time with it but feel free to let me know if you if you do continue to have trouble 
uh, finding good answers. Uh, as a general intro to, to how long it takes to do a good article, I think four weeks is kind of at the low end of how long it would take to actually complete a review. But you can't submit something for a review until you've done most of the work of writing it. And I would think that would typically take uh, at least a few weeks to do the research and the writing to put the article together. So I think, uh, you know, I, I would think that a, a longer period, more, probably two or three months, is a more reasonable amount of time. It can be done in short, a shorter amount of time, but uh, it would be a real challenge to expect someone to do it in, in, in as little as four weeks. Uh, let's see, moving on. So I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit at, at random here. If someone wants to uh, draw my attention to something important that I've missed, feel free to drop it in the chat window. Oh, I see GSO is uh, taking off, so good to have you here. We'll see you next week. Um, so I'm going to jump ahead to, oh, so I put this one in, question 20, how do notifications work? Uh, this is something I really, if, if you've been leaving comments uh, on the talk page, you may have noticed that sometimes you get a, a red notification icon next to your username. Here it says zero, it's gray. Uh, but if I had a new notification, it would show up red here in the center of, top center of my screen. And, uh, there are a few different things that can cause a notification. The, the main one is if someone leaves you a message on your user talk page, uh, it'll actually, not only will that turn red, you'll also get a highlighted yellow alert that says you have new messages. Uh, but also, if, uh, if I mention someone's username, it, actually, if someone knows how to do this already, if like a more experienced student, uh, please leave a message somewhere for me for the account Pete Forsyth Demo and then we can see what it looks like on my end. Um, so just uh, say something in the chat window if you, uh, if you can do that, and we'll use that as an example. Um, but the, uh, the, the basic thing you would do is, this is a, a relatively new feature on Wikipedia. Um, let's see, I'm going to do new section, and I'm going to call it paging snarfa. And then, so I'm going to leave a notification for Sarah. Uh, so the code that will make it show up as a red box uh, in her notifications is just by putting her username in user colon snarfa in double square brackets to make it a link. So I'll just do a preview here so you can see what that shows up as. So that shows up as a blue link that links to her user page. So if I, if I put that in as a link, she's going to get a notification. But then there's a couple of other things I can do as well. Uh, first of all, as you hopefully have seen before, I can put in a vertical pipe, and let's say I want to just put her name. Uh, so this is still going to link to her user page. It's still going to notify her through her user account, but when I do show preview, you'll see it shows up on this page just as Sarah. Uh, and another nice thing that I like to do with notifications on talk pages is I will usually put the at symbol in front, which is something that I borrow from Twitter. I've noticed a number of other Wikipedians doing this as well. So this is not code in the sense that it uh, makes the Wikipedia software do anything special, but it does kind of visually help people see that you are addressing your comment specifically to a person. So if I wanted to say, Sarah, um, you look really and then I would sign it. So now it's going to show up if this is in the midst of a discussion. Uh, people's eyes will get drawn to that as a, uh, as a specific comment directed at her. Thanks, Pete. So, <laughs> well, sure. So I'm going to just go to another page and see if a notification comes up for me, see if anyone has. Nope, no notifications for me. Um, so hopefully that, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's not something you need to know, but it can be a nice thing to do um, if you want to leave, uh, leave a message for someone on a discussion page, like on our class talk page, and make sure that they see it. 
uh, you know, if you're not certain that they have it on their watch list, or maybe they have a really long watch list and they're not wa watching it really closely, um, if you do that, it'll show up as a notification. So, uh, actually, another uh, another trick that I uh, that has come up in our class before, but I don't think anybody has. I haven't seen anyone trying yet here. If you go into preferences and I think it's under gadgets. No, it's not under gadgets. Uh, I'm looking for Wikilove, which I think maybe it's under miscellaneous. Yes. Okay. So um, this may be enabled by default. You may not need to travel track it down. I don't remember. But uh, if you click preferences and then click misc for miscellaneous, uh, and then enable this top option. Don't forget to save. Click the Save button at the bottom. Now when you're looking at someone else's talk page, um, you're going to see a new option. Oh, I see I have a notification. I'll check that in a moment to, to finish that, but let me finish this thought first. So uh, let me, I'm going to click on someone else's user page. So NetherZone, I don't know if you're still on our call here today, but let's say I'm looking at your user page or your user talk page. Now I see this heart in my menu bar. So if I click that, now I can leave her uh, a, sort of a gift on her on her user page or her talk page. So let's say I want to leave her. Uh, let's say I want to leave her uh, a cup of coffee, and I want to say, "Hey, thanks for asking. Great questions in class." So I just type in a little message, and now I can preview this before it actually shows up. So it's going to create this nice box that's going to show up on her uh, on her talk page. And when I click Send Wikilove, that's that's actually going to place it there. Uh, why don't I just send this just for the heck of it? I don't. I think she may have left already, so here's a little surprise for her. And. That's interesting. I think someone else already left her <laughs> a cup of coffee. That's a strange coincidence there. So that can be fun as you're, especially within the class, if you're uh, if you're seeing other people's uh, edits and you want to express some appreciation or something like that, you can you can do that. Okay, so let me go back to our Etherpad. <laughs> you're gonna look at your notification. Oh right. <laughs> And EJ is asking. Yeah. EJ is asking if you wouldn't mind looking at question eight after that. Okay, very good. I will. So okay, so somebody apparently did leave me a message. So I'm going to click on the notification, and we get this nice drop-down menu. And it was Sarah. So if I click on this, it's going to take me to the page where she mentioned my name. And there it is. So even if I wasn't watching. If I didn't have Sarah's user page or talk page on my watch list, um, I would get a no notification that she left this. So that's a really good way if you respond to somebody on our talk page, they may not know you responded to them unless you trigger their name kind of um, a trick. Yeah. That's sort of an awkward thing about the way Wikipedia works, uh, is that because there are so many different places to talk to people, uh, sometimes you get, people lose track of the discussions that they're in, so this is a good way to um, to make sure things sync up. So, Chris, I see you, you tried mentioning me on your talk page, and it didn't work. So let's let's take a look at that. Um, Chris, could you remind me? Can you just type in your username? I don't remember the exact. Okay, good. So you mentioned it at the bottom. So let's look at the code that you put in. OK, so that it looks like you did it just right. So it seems like you're just the one with problems this week. I don't know why that didn't work. Um, can you try signing that line? So I'm going to back out of it. 
And if you click edit and put the four tildes at the end of it, um, it's possible that a signature is required. I'm not, I'm not certain. The, the notifications feature is relatively new. It's, uh, it's in, in the last few months and I've, I've used it, but I wouldn't say I've used it so heavily that I know all the ins and outs of it. So. Okay, so he's done, so I'm going to refresh. It's not showing up. I don't know why it's not showing up. Well, this is something I will look into after class, and if I come up with an answer, I will be sure to share it on our class talk page. Hmm. I'm, uh, I'm mystified. Okay, so Jade wanted me to look at question eight. So how should we handle plagiarism on pages we edit? Okay, so uh, I, I assume what you're looking for is if you if you find if you find a page where somebody else has um, has copied and pasted something from elsewhere on the web, that's uh, usually the most common. Oh, Ryan, I did. I saw that you were dealing with some of this. Uh, okay, so uh, well, I'll just be sure to point out to him that he can he can uh, check out the video afterwards. Um, so let's let me pull up Ryan's uh, page because I. I thought that was, uh, I'm, I'm glad he asked because I, I was noticing this as I was looking at people's edits and thought this would be a good thing to look at as a class. Oh, oh I see. I'm on the wrong. There we go. So I'm going to, I've come down to Ryan's username in our class list and then I'm going to click on contribs. Let's see his contributions. I think it was the article on rafting. Yep, there we go. So I'm going to click on the talk page. So he has, so uh, I, I think Ryan has really uh, done a great job here. I think this is going to be a good example. Um, I'm going to click down to the second to last section. So Ryan proposed deleting the technique section of the article about drafting. And he gives a number of different reasons, one or a couple of different reasons. But the second reason is that it looks like it was plagiarized from commercial rafting sites. So he got kind of an interesting, he got a, a, a detailed response here. Uh, and this person basically is saying uh, it's, it's, it's not really a problem if it's, uh, if it's not well referenced. This is, uh, I, you, you know, because anyone can edit Wikipedia, you get people with, with all kinds of different ideas. And this is something that uh, that that hopefully you kind of learn to distinguish as you go through the class. This person is not answering um, in a way that that complies with Wikipedia's policies and, and standards. And uh, if so, so we've we've covered the five pillars of Wikipedia: that everything needs to be verifiable, um, that everything needs to be free content. So hopefully, we all know in this class that this is not really a typical answer. That this isn't the right answer. So if it if 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 this uh, discussion continues and more people get involved in it, we know where this is going to go, right? We can't include plagiarized material. So I think I think Ryan was absolutely right. I mean, I haven't looked into this uh, in detail, uh, but from what I read, it seems like like Ryan really has and has come to a conclusion that 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 really this is is not in compliance with policy. And he did the right thing. He brought it up for discussion here. Now that he's found someone that disagrees with him, now he's going to have to. Um, to figure out how to work through that. And there are a lot of different approaches to it. It kind of depends on how committed are you to this article. If it's just something that you happen to upon, you don't really have a duty to do anything about it. If it was just an article that kind of caught your interest, um, you know, maybe you just let it be. If this is something that you've chosen as your final project um, and you, you've decided that, you're, that you really want to improve this article, then you should probably do something about it. Uh, Typically, when there's a, a disagreement, the best thing to do is to is to make direct reference to Wikipedia's policies. So um, you'd want to go back to the uh, the five pillars. Uh, this is a good shortcut link to remember because it's such a, a basic central thing about Wikipedia. WP colon five P. 
and find that verifiability policy. Um, and you might want to browse through, if you go to the bottom here, there are these uh, key Wikipedia policies and guidelines. So if you click show, you'll find more detailed policies as well. So you might, so um, backing up your position with Wikipedia policies is the best way to try to persuade someone. Um, and if that doesn't work, then uh, an, another good next step is to try to bring somebody else into the discussion. And, and the best way to do it is, is not to bring them in and say, hey, I need you to back me up, um, but is to approach them, you know, with respect for the idea that they might have their own take on it. Hey, I, I came to a disagreement with this other user. Would you mind taking a look? This is something where wiki projects can be really useful. If you're active in a wiki project, uh, leave a note on that wiki project's talk page. You know, ideally something that's, that's related to the article that it's about. Uh, there are also, um, if it's not connected with a wiki project in any way, there are dispute resolution uh, processes. So, um, um, I'm going to just type in WP colon dispute, um, and you'll see lots of pages come up. So, dispute resolution is a is a whole page that will give you an overview of the different options that you have. So there. various ways to go out and ask someone else to, um, to take a look. Um, oh, oh my. So Sarah is reminding me that, uh, that I was going to look at NetherZone's uh, article that she has in her sandbox. And I didn't do that. And uh, I think I've missed the chance. I, I think she took off. So. I think maybe you should go ahead and do it anyway, unless someone else has one yep. in their sandbox that they'd like to volunteer. Yeah. I think people might be curious about how, how this whole thing works. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea. Um, Harvard Vegan is volunteering one in uh, his sandbox. Okay. So why don't we start with that one? And I think what I'll do is either, if we have time to also look at Nether Zone's article in class today, I'll do that. And if not, I will. I'll, I'll do that and uh, and send it out as a as a screencast separate from from class. Um, but let's let's Harvard Vegan. Let's look at yours since you're here. Um, while you're pulling that up, I, I do want to give make a, a general comment. Uh, I, I I meant to mention earlier in the course. Um, there is a process called Ar Articles for Creation that's designed for new Wikipedians to, uh, the, the idea of it is that it would provide a pretty easy process for creating an article and getting it approved and published on Wikipedia. In practice though, um, I, I, I would discourage you from using that, especially while you're in this class, uh, because what we're doing is, is really exploring the ways to, uh, to do for yourself on Wikipedia so that you don't need to ask someone's permission um, to publish something, which is really kind of the core way that Wikipedia is supposed to work. So Articles for Creation is something that was, was actually, the, the process was designed to kind of manage the flood of new articles that get uh, submitted by lots of people, many of whom really have no idea of Wikipedia's policies, um, and a lot of this stuff ends up just being junk. It's like a page that, uh, you know, a teenager writes about their best friend, or um, it's completely unreferenced article about someone's favorite band, or something like that. So uh, I think in this course, I, I think everyone here has a, a, a pretty good sense by now of what a Wikipedia article should look like. So you're you're better off just creating something on your own. Um, okay, so Harvard Vegan, you have given us a an example of a draft article. So I'm gonna. Let's see. So you have a couple of different examples here. Um, so I'll start off with uh, with Norman A. Scotch. Oops, I just pasted that badly. Oh, okay. So I'm. I guess I can just click it, can't I? I was uh, <laughs> I was thinking I was using a different browser than my default, but that's 
Okay, thanks, Bob. We'll see you next week. Okay, so Maynard, we, let's see. So you've got the name, you've got the birth year. Um, typically, I think the, the, if the death year is unknown, well, if, if the person's still alive, uh, I think that would just be left blank, 1928 dash, and then closing parentheses. Uh, and if it's just unknown, I think that would typically be a question mark. That's just a detail, though. That's not, not to worry about. Um, so I'm just kind of scanning through this. It does look to me like the writing style generally seems appropriate. You know, it seems like you've, you've got sort of the, the, the concept of a Wikipedia biography down pretty well. I'm, I'm not sure what uh, tape two and tape three are here. Tape one, tape two, tape three. Uh, is this something that you're transcribing from, from audio or all this comes from aged audio tapes of oral history interviews? Interesting. Okay. So, um, oh, this sounds like a really interesting case. Okay. So, um, Let's see. What do I want to? There are a lot of directions I could go here. The f the first thing when when you're when you're looking at creating a new article, the first thing you always want to do is consider whether the topic is notable by Wikipedia's definition. I don't think that's going to be a problem here, just by the basic claim that he founded the Boston University School of Public Health. I mean, that's a significant school. If he's the founder, um, you know, it's I'm I'm sure that there is plenty of uh, you know, plenty of published material about this person uh, to establish that, that, that he's significant enough for a Wikipedia article. Um, the, uh, but the, the issue about this being a transcription brings up copyright questions. So if this, if this is something that is explicitly, was explicitly released into the public domain, then we're great. If it's something that had copyright and the copyright has lapsed, like if it was done earlier than a certain date, I think like 1978, and nobody renewed the copyright, I don't remember offhand exactly what those thresholds are, uh, then it might be in the public domain. Um, but if it's not, then uh, it would be, then it would, it would basically be considered plagiarism to include it here, unless you can establish that whoever owns that copyright, um, you know, consents to release it in this way. So that's, that's kind of a, um, yeah, I, I, I think this is a, this is a bit of an unusual case. So I'm not going to go into that in more detail now, but I, I, I'm happy to get back to it on the talk page. Um, I think there's some of the, some of what people are interested in here is the technical question of how to publish something once it's in a, in a, uh, in your sandbox. I think ideally you would have several footnotes. Uh, in the article before you uh, before you went to publish it, but let's just say it's at that point. Uh, there are there are two choices. You can either just go into the edit screen and copy, and then uh, and then go to the then you would want to create a link to the page somewhere. So ideally, you know, like in a case in this case, you might go to the Boston University Wikipedia article and put a link to Norman A. Scotch in that article by putting in double brackets and typing his name. Uh, you know, you'd put that right in the edit window of the Boston University article and, you know, probably putting that in a sentence uh, about this person founded the public school of health, school of public health, and then that would create a red link. So then you would click on that and then you could just paste the code from your sandbox right in there and that would create the article. Uh, another way to do it is you can use the move feature. So you see here next to the watch list star, there's this button move. And that will enable you to give a new name to it. So instead of being in user space, you would choose article. And then you would give it, you would take uh, Maynard's username out and just put Norman A. Scotch. And you might say publishing time, and you can choose whether you want to watch it and then click move page. So if that, as long as that's not overwriting another article, that will just move automatically. The reason that you would want to do this is that it preserves the whole edit history. So 
Um, let's say Maynard has worked on this article and then has asked for some help from someone else in the class and a few different people have worked on it. Um, all of that edit history would show up once he's moved it over as well. Um, if he just copies and pastes it, it's going to lose that edit history. It, it does take a lot of guts to move your first article over. It's something that's kind of difficult to do for some people, especially without some mentoring. And yeah. I, um, I think Pete would be happy to look over your articles and help you with that. Yes, very much. I think I think uh, the 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 course talk page is any time if you've been working on an article or even just taking notes on an article. If you've got a little bit of an outline or links to some sources. Um, that's a great thing to post on the the Wiki Project Open class discussion page. Just leave a note and say, you know, make a new section, leave a link to you to it in your sandbox, uh, and then, you know, maybe you would leave a, a subject line like feedback wanted. And uh, I would certainly take a look at it, but other students in the course are welcome to look at that as well. Um, Wikipedia really thrives on getting a variety of, of perspectives, so often uh, other people in the course will um, uh, will have ideas that wouldn't even occur to me. Um, so uh, I do see one one question there. They won't delete my draft page, will they? Um, so it's it's true that your sandbox is is for the most part yours, and it's not. Uh, it, it's, it's very rare for something to be deleted out of your sandbox, but if it is considered to be a copyright violation um, and somebody notices it, they might delete it out of there. Um, it's, you know, usually nobody will really notice that until, uh, until you actually submit it somewhere, um, but it's, it's something like if, you, if, if there are concerns about whether something is a direct copy from something else that might not be in the public do domain, um, then that's something you want to resolve before you move it to the regular article space. So, well, Sarah, I think your basic answer was yes, was was right. Uh, you know, for the most part, for the most part, your sandbox is pretty much your own space to play with, but there are some exceptions. So. Um, I could go on to NetherZone's article, or I could do that uh, in a way where she can directly explain. I, I'm kind of more inclined to come back to that and do a screencast that I can send out so that uh, we can be sure that she sees it. Um, so if anyone else has a question they'd like me to focus on, why don't you mention? Oh, so uh, the Auerbach article. Um, let's see, I'm scrolling back. Oh, and I see AMJ also. Actually, let me, let me go to AMJ's just so I can uh, cover someone else's article now. So Maynard, if we don't get back to your second one, again, feel free to put it on the, the talk page, and I'll come back to it there. Uh, so AJM has an article about independent learning. So uh, I'm curious if this is, uh, I'm, I'm going to just type in to see if there already is an article with this title, Independent Learning Center. So no, it looks like this is something new. Um, I think notability would be a, a question that a lot of people would, would, would look at this and say, okay, this is, a, this is a phrase that has some meaning, but is it a topic in itself that has been covered sufficiently to be considered notable? I don't know the answer to that. I'm just, you know, um, th this is the kind of question you want to be prepared for before you publish it. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, though, that it, it probably is a legitimate field of study and, and, and does have notability, but you just, you just want to be sure that that is kind of made clear in a way that someone not familiar with the discipline can recognize it. Um, I see that you have uh, linked to a couple of books for references. This is fantastic. Uh, it looks to me like you haven't, uh, you're maybe still figuring out how to go about formatting those references, they're, they're in, the, uh, in the prose itself instead of in the references section, which is fine. Uh, as I think I've said before, uh, it's, you, know, you can go ahead and just publish this on Wikipedia just like this, uh, and someone else will surely come along sooner or later and help out with that 
uh, with that process. If you prefer, if you want uh, someone to show you how to do it, then this is another great thing to just ask on the course talk page, and one of us will come over and, and demonstrate to you how to push those down into the references section. Um, I see, so uh, the term and concept are an important aspect of the evolution of open educational resources. So this is wonderful. It's a, a really direct connection to our, our course. Um, so one thing that you might want to do is link um, open education resources. And the way you would do that is just by enclosing that in double square brackets. Um, you might need to adjust the capitalization uh, to make it link not a red link, but actually a blue link that actually connects to the article. Uh, but you can, by using those those pipes, you can you can still have it display with capitals here. Um, you know, you can have it linked to the article with lowercase, but still display as uppercase. Uh, there's also some people say open education resources, others say open educational resources. So uh, I'm not sure if there's a redirect that connects those up or not. Um, so uh, AJM, can you, is, is this helpful? Are there other aspects? Oh, okay, that was the question you, a question you had. You noticed that most of them are up, or lowercase. Good, okay. Um, so I think someone has brought up whether it should be uppercase or lowercase by Wikipedia's manual of style. I think it's, I think there's kind of an argument to be made in either direction. Uh, I'm not going to express a strong opinion on that, but it's uh, definitely the kind of thing people love to talk about on talk pages. It's a really good idea to, at the very least, develop some consensus within an article about whether you're going to use upper or lower case. Um, but you know, you probably shouldn't expect. It's it's the kind of thing. If if uh, it, it, if you were to bring this up on the Wiki Project Open talk page, it's this is a place where, it, like, as the Wiki Project talk page and a number of people weighed in and all came to a consensus, then that's the kind of thing that. Uh, would really justify you in going to a number of different articles and changing it to whatever the consensus is, uppercase or, or lowercase. Um, personally, that's not the kind of thing that I usually devote my time to on Wikipedia. I have in the past, uh, but I've sort of come to a point where I'm kind of okay with letting that stuff go and I'm much more interested in, in getting into the substance of, uh, of an article. But it's it's all personal choice. Some people are much more um, tuned into uh, getting details like that consistent, and that's one of the things that makes Wikipedia so wonderful is that you can put your energy where you want to. Okay, um, so we're getting close to the end of the hour. Uh, Maynard, why don't I take a quick look at your second article now? Uh, let's see. Here we go, Tamara Auerbuck. So it looks like you've got another biography here. This one seems to have a lot more links and uh, and formatting. Looks like you've got some for some footnotes built in. This is great. Uh, info box. So I can see you're you're getting a lot further with this one on the on the basic formatting. Uh, you've got sections. Oh, this this it looks like you've put a lot of work into this. So. Uh, is there a specific question you have about this one? This seems like a very different case than the other one that we just looked at, Maynard. Okay, bye, Chris. Uh, I think we we still had something I wanted to follow up with you on about the um, the visual error error on in Chrome. Uh, so I'm going to take a look on at that, and I'll leave you a note on your talk page or send you an email uh, if I figure something out. Okay, so Maynard, more interesting, but first suit against Harvard for gender discrimination. Is that notable? Ah, okay, so, so the, um, okay, so, yeah, there's a great notability question. So, um, there are kind of two interrelated topics here. If it's, if the article is going to be titled the person, if it's a biography of the person, um, then the question is whether that person meets Wikipedia's notability guideline. And if you were instead to write an article that had the title of uh, you know, Tamara Auerbuck's Sex Discrimination Act uh, or uh, uh, Lawsuit Against Harvard, 
then the question would be whether that incident, that whether that lawsuit um, met Wikipedia's notability guidelines. So, um, so either one of those is a legitimate way to go, but it's going to change the kind of article that you write. In one case, you're going to want to write as thorough, you know, like the, the way that you've chosen here, you start off with her early life, her education, her career. So this really is a biography of her. Um, and the basic rule for the, the, the general notability guideline, and that's at WP colon GNG, general notability guideline, uh, basically says that something has to have received significant uh, coverage in independent, reliable sources. So what that means in practical terms is typically, oh, about three or four newspapers or academic journals uh, have, have written about her, and at least a couple of those uh, have been profiles specifically about her, not just mentioning the lawsuit, but specifically about the topic of the Wikipedia article. Um, this, there, there is a more specific guideline for biographies. There's an even more specific guideline for uh, people in academia. So when you're looking at this notability page, uh, you can find, uh, if, you, if you look through it, you'll find uh, lots of more specific guidelines that kind of narrow that down. So for instance, with, uh, with people in academia, uh, it might uh, talk about like how much they published or something like that. Um, so that's I, I, that's that's the general answer to your question, and we are getting to the end of the hour, so I think I'm going to just leave it at that for now. But certainly, this is something we can dig into a little bit more. Uh, I'm very happy to help you address notability questions before you publish an article because that can save some frustration. Uh, so feel free to leave a note on the course talk page. All right, thanks to everyone who stayed through to the bitter end. Uh, great to have you all here. It's, uh, I, I'm really appreciating all the detailed questions. Uh, I thank you for engaging so wholeheartedly with the Etherpad format. I mean, I think we need to find some way to preserve all of the Q&A we've got over there in a slightly more accessible yes. location for the long term. Maybe we can move it over to the talk page. Yes, I think we should do that. To the talk page or to the week three page. Um, I think uh, I, I think if someone wants to just copy and paste that in, um, you're welcome to. Uh, I'm I'm going to actually take a break here. It's been kind of a long day for me, so if I come back and someone else has added it, that's great. Uh, if not, I'll do it myself. Um, one thing that uh, I'll I don't think we really need to worry about this within our our class pages, but it is uh, technically, if I'd anticipated this, and maybe before we do this next week, uh, it's a good idea for me to ask that everyone explicitly uh, consents to have their what they type in here uh, republished, that, that they explicitly release this under a free license as you do when you use the Wikipedia uh, in, the, in the terms of use. Um, because this is another thing where someone might come along, it's, I think unlikely, but someone might come along and say, hey, you didn't have everyone's permission to republish that, so we have to delete it. So, Anyway, uh, we're definitely getting into the details there, so uh, thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you all next week and watching your work on the wiki. Thank you all. Thanks especially to those still hanging around now, and uh, we will see you online and next week. Bye-bye. We do still see your screen, you know. <laughs>